All right, hi automotive students. Primarily this is going to apply to the ASEP students. Uh, same stuff here is going to apply to most any other manufacturer who uses this type of connector. But uh, the vehicles and the PCMs, these are GM products. Now, a lot of times you're going to have to scope a sensor circuit or maybe a solenoid, some output. And those things may be in a, an inconvenient place to get to, so uh, it may be more convenient to do at the PCM. Now, in order to back probe this PCM connector, we need to first remove it from the PCM, but then we also have to remove this cover so that we can access the wires. Now, on this type of connector, there's a little red lock pin right here, so I'm going to have to move that out in this direction. Then I'm going to have to just push down on part of the connector right here and then I can raise the lever. So I'll attempt to do that without getting too much in the way of the camera. All right, so I'm just going to push that connector or that little lock out, being very careful not to break it. That is now going to allow me to push down right here on this and you kind of heard it click. I'm going to grab this lever and you can see the lever now moves. Now as I move this lever, it is going to basically begin to pull this connector out of the PCM. Yeah, do a little more wiggling and out it comes. All right, so here's this guy right here. I don't know if you can see the color real well. This is gray. This is one of the problems you run into if you're looking at connector IDs. Uh, in many cases, the connector is going to be exactly the same. The only difference is going to be the color. And unfortunately, you can't see this color without removing them. So, yeah, anyways, there you go. Okay, next thing I need to do in order to remove this plastic cover, I'm going to need to remove this little clip. Now, let me try to zoom in. And remove is a bad term. I'm going to need to raise it just a little bit. So, very carefully. I'm going to get in here with my screwdriver just to raise him up so I can move him off of the tab. And you can do that with fingernails, I suppose, if you've got good fingernails. All right, that one's off. I've got another exactly like it on this side. So, again, I can raise that, just get it off of that little tab. And if you heard that clicking, that clicking means that I latched the other side without meaning to. Okay, now this particular connector, this cover is pretty nice in that I don't have any kind of locking mechanism on the front of it. So these two, and just rock that thing up out of the way there. Now I can access these wires and I can back probe them, okay? kind of like what I have down here. You can see I've got Here's the heads of some pins that I have already put in place there. So, now the problem with doing this is that when I remove the cover, I remove the ability for this connector to securely lock into place. Okay. I can push them in, get them started, and then pull the lever back to the original position, but there is nothing holding this lever in the locked position without this cover in place. So again, you've got to be pretty careful that uh, you don't do something like that while you're running your test and uh, inadvertently disconnect the connector from the PCM. So this one, pretty easy. Next one I'm going to look at is going to be on a GM product, a pickup truck. Now the connector itself pretty much has the same layout, but the plastic cover is completely different, so we have to go into a little more surgery to remove that. All right, good place to pause the video. Okay, while I'm on this vehicle's PCM, let me show you a couple things right here. We get these little protrusions, these little dowels sticking up out of here. It's going to be easier to show you on this vehicle rather than the pickup truck, but those two things have a pretty big purpose. They are going to align with little slots in a connector. One here, one there, and then on the other side. Now, those are the things that are going to allow this connector 
this lever to rock back. Right now, it is kind of locked into place. And that reason being is that, uh, well, one of these little tabs is protruding out into this slide, keeping it locked. Now, when I push this over top of the connector here in the PCM and these dowels go up into the slots, they are then going to push that little protruding piece of the slide out and unlock this and allow it to move. And hopefully we'll see that on the, uh, the GM product, the pickup truck that we look at. Okay. And push it on there. Now it allows me to move that. Okay, without it, it's locked. All right. All right, to remove this connector, I need to slide this lock in this direction. Then it'll allow me to raise the lever. Now, sometimes these are a little stubborn. Sometimes a little persuasion is in order. All right, push them. Now I can raise this. Okay. And just like the other one, as I moved the lever, it raised it up out of the PCM. And this one is blue. Move the cover. Okay, now, it's like what we saw on a little cruise. This little tab, I have to push him up out of the way on this side and this side. So that procedure is the same, then the cover will come off. Same thing for the other side. Okay, now I'm able to remove the cover, back probe the wires. But again, as I mentioned, with the cover also comes the little lock. Now the problem with that, this needs to be in place to reinstall that connector to the PCM. So there's something I have to do to the rest of the connector. All right, now as we looked at the other PCM connector, we've got these little slots right here. Okay, we've got the little protrusions on the connector side of the PCM that has to align with those and slide in place. I can't show you this on uh, this one, so that's why we showed you on that little cruise. Now, the slides there, if we could show you. We've got a little blue slide here, a little white slide there. These are the things that are going to slide and either draw this connector into the PCM or withdraw it from the PCM. These have to come out. Now you can't simply grab hold of them and yank them out of there because again, here's a little, little piece right here. I don't know if I'm going to be able to show you that well or not. Okay, right here. This protrudes through the plastic case here and locks this from sliding. This is where one of those dowels would go from the PCM connector. Now, if I push on here just slightly, I'm able to move him out and then I can push the slide. There, I've just moved the white one in slightly. Now, I can push him in a little bit further. Okay, so now I've moved him quite a bit through here, but we're not done yet. Because once he gets up to this slot, that same little piece is gonna protrude through the case here, keeping it from sliding. So if I push like so, then, I'm able to withdraw this completely. All right. So this is the one side. I just repeat on the other side with the one that's blue. There's this slide. Okay. You can see right here, this is where the dowels will go. 
and as this moves forward or back it's going to tend to either draw that connector in or help withdraw or push that connector out of the PCM. Now these little teeth up here will engage the teeth here on the slide. So when I raise the uh, lower the lever this causes the slide to go one way or the other. Now with these still in that connector I cannot push the connector back into the PCM but once these are removed I can now seat the connector in the PCM. Now there's nothing that's locking it into place however so again you have to be extremely careful when you're doing your measurements not to wiggle the harness otherwise you're liable to withdraw this from the PCM and uh, possibly hurt a PCM. Alright, that's all I got for this. Alright, it's a little windy and noisy out here. Hopefully you can hear me. Uh, this is something that Chrysler and a few other manufacturers do. Rather than having to remove that cover to access the wires and the pins to do some measurements, they use what's called a breakout box. Now, the breakout box is pretty nice. All right, that's a breakout box. Now, breakout box is gonna allow me, instead of having to back probe the connector, this is gonna go in between the connector and the PCM. It's what I call a pass-through breakout box. And this is going to allow me to simply place my meter leads in these pins. Now, the numbers on these pins correspond to the numbers of the pins on the connectors of the PCM. So this is uh, really, really a nice tool. And I've been talking this long, seeing it's upside down. There, that's better. So here again, it's a pretty nice tool. It'll allow me just to get in there and uh, I don't have to tear anything apart and I don't risk damaging the pins by back probing. Now, as far as removal goes, right, removal will be similar to what we saw with GM and other manufacturers that do the, kind of the same thing. We've got a little lock here on the connector, so I need to slide that lock out in this direction. And then I can simply squeeze, releasing it, and then I can pull out. With this breakout box, we've got two connectors. One is going to plug into the harness connector, the other is going to plug into. See him connected. 